Uh, you know, some people are calling this the best sequel to the entire uh, Scream franchise. Some people are saying mm, it's falling a little flat. But that's what we're going to discuss today. And I want to, I want you guys to reach out, comment, let us know what you think of this movie. And uh, today, what we're going to do, just so you know the format, we're going to do, we're going to discuss it spoiler free. And then at one point in the show, we're just, it's all hell breaks loose. We're going to talk about the movie in depth, detail by detail, who the killer is, what the motives are, how the characters are, whether they like, and who dies, and who dies. Yes. And uh, I mean, really, it's been what. 11 months now yeah. this thing came out in january so yeah. so i mean it goes without saying spoilers will come but we will inform you when spoilers do come but without further ado i want to bring on um uh, the producer of the show as well as uh the co-host of at the grown-ups table a show i also host please uh bring on mr john jacobs john how you doing my friend doing good how are you guys doing doing good Look at you with your badass square glass of water. Um, no, this would be wine. It's a, it's gonna be a it's a wine night tonight. We gotta talk about this horrible movie. Ah, uh, <laughs> really? Really? All right, all right, all right. It has not even been two minutes. Well, <laughs> well, it, 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 it's gonna happen. It's 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 starting. But anyways, so let's t we're, we're gonna talk about uh, Scream, everybody. So now. Before we get into it, uh, like I said, the first part of the show, we're going to keep it very spoiler-free at the moment. Um, yeah. Before we go for any further, um, John, what is your initial spoiler-free thoughts about this? And don't worry, we will get in detail when we start talking about the plot. That's okay. Yeah. So everybody I know watched this movie, and I just I didn't get around to it. It's, it's been a crazy year at work and, and stuff, and... Um, just a lot of my attention hasn't been on certain, <laughs> yeah, 1735Q9, there it is, because I don't know what the fuck happened in Terminator Genesis, it went way off. <laughs> they didn't even include Genesis in the combination. They didn't even spell it right, you know when they don't even spell the name right, it's not going to be a good movie, they so. Didn't give a shit. They didn't give a shit, uh, but anyways, um. But right now, I uh, just want to throw Michael as join us for drink. Michael, cheers to you, my friend. Cheers to you. Hey, Michael. So, okay. So, so what, was the, what, what was the question that you asked me? Did I answer it? I, we went on a tangent. <laughs> you kind of answered yeah, it. Yeah, you did. You oh, 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 it. It, oh, oh. It was, it was how I felt about it. So, yeah. So, after Scream 4, I was ready for redemption. And everybody I know saw this movie. I saw everywhere. This is great. Back to the Roots. OG. Oh, this is phenomenal. It was so good. I fucking loved it. I can't wait to go see it again. Best of the new release. Like, you name it, I saw it. And these are from credible people that I take their opinion on films very strongly because um, I, I feel they know what they're talking about. So I was just really excited to see it. And then this year, my daughter, she turned 11, and she's starting to dabble into more adult stuff. And she wanted to watch a rated R horror movie, but she's not into like, like a lot of the gore and like the terror. So we, I was trying to find something that was still rated R, <laughs> still grown up, <laughs> that she could still handle, right? And so we landed on screen. And so we were actually at my brother and his husband's house, and we were just kicking it there for the day. And we actually watched Scream One there, and she loved it. Like she fell in love with it, right? So she ended up being Ghostface for Halloween, and we've been watching all the Scream movies since, and we finally finished. We watched Scream 5 a couple of days ago, and uh, so we've watched through all of them now. She's a big fan of the series, and uh, so, you know, I was really excited to see 5, and I don't know, man. I don't know what happened. I feel like they, <laughs> they, they couldn't have gone worse than they did before. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, I mean, it's... We, it's basically like we kind of did the first movie, but it's the fifth movie. And then we kind of did a reboot, but not really. And then we kind of followed the fourth movie, but then we kind of didn't. And then we kind of referenced the third movie, but then it kind of retcons it. And I'm just like, this is too fucking confusing for a high school kid that gets in a Halloween costume and stabs his friends because he's mad about X reasons. <laughs> so I, I don't know why it had to get all fucking complex like that. And I don't want to say too much more because there, this, this, I can't even believe that I'm saying this movie has so many spoilers, but it kind of does because, like, 
I don't know. It just goes off the fucking rails, and like everything is a, is a spoiler in this. But that's essentially what we have. And then like one cool thing happens, and then like fifty stupid things happen, and I'm just like, <laughs> I don't know what's happening here. So, uh, so real quickly before we move on to move on how, now on the at the grown-ups table show, which a lot of people from that show are watching. John hat. We have a John rating system of mm, one mm. being one being good, mm, <laughs> five being not good. Where is Scream Five? Scream Five is in the mm, and it doesn't stop. Ooh. One. I hope it is. Try this logic. Is this on the same level as Halloween Ends? Uh, I would rather watch Scream 5 than Halloween Ends. Thank you. Okay, yeah. That's all I needed. Yeah. 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 Ha- Halloween Ends was a rough one. Look, I'll keep it real. I mean, like, I'm, I can be objective here. Like, I mean, the Halloween <laughs> Ends is, like, on the bottom. Okay? Like, and there's not really much that's going to be able to Scream 5 again than Halloween Ends. Absolutely. Okay. Okay, that's good. All right. So, uh, at this time of the show, we are going to go into spoilers. Uh, so, what we're going to do at this time is... We are going to slowly go through the storyline. I'm just going to read it off. Mm. Now, you two, feel free to jump in. If if you if I start talking about something or there's something I'm missing in this particular part of the story where you're like, John, you're like, that's fucking dumb. Or Sarah, that was fucking brilliant. This is the time where we can dissect what we liked and did not like about this movie. And okay. All right. So let's get into the – oh, wait. We already did that part. Yeah. All right. What a waste of a – uh, sticker for that one. We already did it. Okay. I like these. Uh, I like these graphics, Jesse. It's nice. We're gonna be br- we're gonna be bringing them into our show. So, uh, well, hold on. I kind of like the differentiation, though. I like that there's different things for each show. It's kind of interesting. Okay. All right. Well, we'll we'll, t- we'll talk. Well, we'll, uh, we'll have, like I said, we whatever we're doing at our show, I'm. I was just I just want to share the wealth. Okay, but. moving on. All right, Nigel says, please spoil the movie that gives John anger sweats. <laughs> well, Nigel, it's actually really warm in, in my home office right now. I got my door open, my fan's on, like, medium high, and I'm still sweating. So, And I'm drinking wine, which I kind of – so this is this whole combination where you might see me sweat. But I got the bandana on, so it hides it a little bit. But <laughs> if my nose gets a little glossy, then you win, sir. All right. So now let's get into the movie, all right? Like I said, people comment if you want to say if something is dumb or brilliant. All right, it is 25 years after Billy Loomis and Stu Mocker killing spree in in Woodsboro. I'm already pissed off. (laughs) Why? Is it the time? Is it the time? Because I know what's coming. Because I know what's coming. All right. Oh, my God. High school Tara... High school student Tara Carpenter is home alone when she is attacked by a face and left hospitalized. And they had that whole thing where they were like, lock door, unlock yeah. door, lock door, unlock door. With the app? Yeah. I thought the opening or the opening scene was solid. Um, it was until she started defending hereditary. And then I was like, oh, it's gonna be one of those. <laughs> John, some people like hereditary. Uh, people I get it. it. So, I mean, look, I understand, and some people like the fourth Matrix movie too. It doesn't mean it was good. Oh my I just, God. I love how John just sat there in his godlike chair and was like, "You like Hereditary? Be gone, die." <laughs> <laughs> just, I like. He's the only. You would have been the only guy in the movie theater rooting for Ghostface. Like, go, go. I mean, I'm not gonna lie. In screen movies, I do root for Ghostface. Like, I, you know, and. Now that, like, Nev Campbell's out, which I still think is kind of stupid, I, I feel like they could have came to a compromise. Yeah. Um, I'm never going to get the satisfaction of her dying. And I have wanted her to die from the very first episode. And it's like, now I can't have that. And that also upsets me. It's a little selfish, but it upsets me. Uh, real quickly, I love that somebody somebody's taking your side. Wait, there was a storyline? Yeah, like- see? Am I the only person that likes this movie? God damn it. I love movies. Are you asking me or Sarah? Uh, well, I'll ask you for the both of you. Like, just for the opening? Just for openings. We're talking openings right here. Before okay. we move on. So one, three. You like the voice modulator thing? I love it. All right. It's different. Okay. It's not the same thing every goddamn time. Yeah, That's yeah. why I like it. It's not, it's good different, but it's not like 
the fourth opening. Yeah. Because that one just sucks. The like, fourth one. Oh, yeah. like, Where it was like all meta. Like yeah. it had all the meta shit and all the stabs. Yeah, that was that. I hate the whole stab thing. I'm just going to throw that out there. I hate <laughs> that shit. Like, stop making this the focal point of the fucking movie, all right? Like, come on. Okay. Oh, my God. But, okay, so where do you rank it? For uh, no, so let's let Sarah, I want to hear all of yours. So, okay. your total ranking one, three, five, two, four. Okay. Yeah. I actually could agree with that, to be honest. I, I think that's very fair. Um, I did not like the opening to Scream 2. I, I, I thought that was really dumb and wasted two talented actors. Um, and yeah, this whole. Okay with it. The, the, the whole like movie theater thing it was like what the fuck is happening like come on so um did not really care for that one three was you know okay uh four was stupid with the whole meta shit and five was okay other than she started defending hereditary and i got a little upset <laughs> All right, so Michael has it at one, five, two, three, four. Honestly, that's I mean that's not terrible. Yeah. Yeah. Sarah, what do you think what do you think of Michael's list, Sarah? No, that's solid. Um I I always put four dead last. It's just Yeah. Yeah, Um, it is. It's the worst of the ones. And like I had to explain to my daughter, I was like it's this meta shit. They're watching the movie that's inside the movie that's inside the movie that we're all watching. And I'm like, oh my God, why did this get so dumb? <laughs> John's personal hell is that they make a spinoff series called Stab and they defend Baba Duke in front of you. <laughs> oh, dude. I mean, Baba Duke had, was a cool movie that had a really like dumb ending. So, I mean, I'm okay with that being on there because I agree it was, like, elevated horror. And I agree, so was Hereditary. It's just Hereditary sucked, so. <laughs> okay, one day, not next week, but in the next like, month or so, we're going to do an episode of Hereditary, and you're going to sure. be part of it. Because I really need to know the breakdowns of why you hate it. I just know that you hate it. I like the mystery. <laughs> I'll, uh, we, dude, we, we, I'll rewatch it. We can even rewatch it together if you guys want. Like, no problem at all. Good. That, that sounds like a plan. All right. So, no, maybe I'll rewatch it and I'll be like, oh my God, this is the best thing since sliced bread. I mean, something tells me that's not going to happen, but it's good. <laughs> I mean, people thought Scream 5 was a good movie, so anything's possible. Yep. Oh my God. All right. So moving on. So and also the Tara Carpenter character stays in with the uh, the tradition of naming the last name of characters yeah. after uh, John Carpenter characters. Yeah. But I like that. I like that she didn't die. Who Wes being an honor character mm-hmm. of uh, Wes Craven, but also being the daughter of the deputy Hicks. Um, it you know. Yeah. Sam now returns to Woodsboro with her boyfriend, Richie Kirsch, who uh, is from The Boys. Uh, Yeah, so pause there, Jesse. And I have a very serious question for Sarah first, then you. Uh, I want individual answers. Guys, I want 100% honesty. Yeah. Be honest with me. The moment Jack Wade showed up on film in this movie, you were like, that's one of the killers. Wait, what? Wait, the guy from The Boys? No. I yeah. Didn't. Okay, I have never seen The Boys, so I can't answer this question. Well, you're you're married to Jesse. How have you not seen these shows? Because sometimes he watches shows that he knows that I hate at night when I go to bed. So okay, so like- look, okay. So okay, let me let me let me um reset. Let's say The Boys doesn't exist. Okay, so we're revealing characters, and we see the sister racing home to save her other sister, and then there's just this boyfriend sitting there. It didn't hit you that you were like, that's probably one of the killers right there? It did, but I wrote it off because it was going to be too predictable, but they did I, I I wrote it off because of predictability, but I also wrote it off because... Um, I just thought he was so good at playing the nice guy character. Like he's just that's kind of his typecast, in my opinion, that it it fooled me. Okay. Kind of the so, same way. 
Kind of the same way that Aunt Jackie from Roseanne. Dude, is- dude. Okay. Let me just tell you, like, how funny it is anytime I watch screen two and Mickey's like, who do we have behind door number two? And it's just like, it's Jackie! And I'm like, what? Like, you can almost expect to see, like, cartoon text on the screen, like, hey, kids, it's Jackie from Roseanne! She's the killer! After watching Years of Roseanne, when she was in that movie, I, the first time I was watching that, I rode her off so no, fast, I, it wasn't even funny. Yeah, you're like, what? Yeah. Jackie? Here's the thing. I knew she was going to have to be doing something substantial to be on that movie. Exactly. They had to have paid her a shit ton of money. So oh, yeah. Instantly, yeah. I was like, kill her. That was when, like, sitcom stars randomly showed up in movies sometimes. I, <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, there was that trend for a while. Like, they yeah. would just up. Uh, real quickly. Well, I guess- they, would, they would shoot a movie in between seasons of the TV show. They, they'd do the, a season of a TV show, shoot a couple movies, and then the next season would start. Yeah, uh, yeah. I guess I guess I, I missed out. He got – Michael thought he was the killer too, so. The yeah. Ironic, it, it, the really ironic thing, when we were in the movie theater, like, watching it for the first time, and they were at the house, and it was, like, right before the killer was going to appear, Jesse was like – Man, I really hope he's in the next movie. And then he comes <laughs> out with a gun, and he's like, "Wow, yeah. he's not." Yeah, I literally, I <laughs> literally so thought funny. that. Yeah, I'm, I'm a dickhead. It was so funny. Okay, and so let's fast forward to the story because we're gonna get to the next killer, which I'm gonna talk about the kill, the next killer, because the next uh. killer I call, the next killer I definitely call. So to <laughs> get so. So the boyfriend and Sam, they get to the hospital where they meet Wes, Amber, who is one of the killers. And I called it was her. And because I saw yeah. her play crazy in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. And I'm like, that bitch is crazy. All right. She was one of the, Mer- the yeah. not Meryl Manson, the, <laughs> the Manson family killers. Wait, did you at least get that one? You didn't get that one? Um, I don't like Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Oh, okay. That's, fair. that's fine. That's fine. That one is it's, it's it's the only Tarantino film I don't like. It, don't ask me why. It take thirty minutes to explain it. I just don't like it, I, guys. I've tried it. Everybody in internet land. I've tried it. I'm allowed to not like certain things. I don't like them. That movie was a specific niche passion project. So that one, I was like, eh. You're either gonna like this or not. That's kind of the way. I don't. I don't, li- I don't like what they did to Bruce Lee. I, I don't. I don't like. It. Fair enough. That's fair. And I, and I know there was a lot of criticism with that. All right. So real quickly, because killers are blowing up in the comment section, let's jump over. Real oh. fast. Uh, weren't the killers predictable in the first movie, though? No need to change them now. I, I didn't think they were predictable. No, Billy was predictable. Really? <laughs> Billy was predictable, but Stu wasn't, in my opinion. My opinion. I, I felt like Billy was red herring. I, they played him up as red herring very no. well. I mean... I thought it was going to be Billy and Randy. Yeah, I thought for a while it was going to be Randy. And then I also thought it might be somebody, uh, like, unshown as well. Like, somebody third act introduction type thing. Oh, I'm so-and-so. Oh, look, I'm Sydney's mom. I really didn't die. Like, you know, something, anything. Well, they're saving that for the sixth movie. (laughs) Dude, I'm probably right now. If fucking Marine Prescott comes back in this movie, I am out 100%. Like, that bitch is dead. She's not coming back. Do not bring her back to this movie. Like, come on now. How much more can they damage her reputation? (laughs) (laughs) Right? (laughs) She has no legacy because it's completely ruined because she was some crazy, like, Hollywood whore dropped yeah. out that then got suburban married and became suburban whore. And it's well, like, you know, like she's dragging her name through the mud. The what? crux of Friday the 13th is a mother's un- it, unable to grieve her son and wants revenge. You know, Michael Myers, it's about, depending on what timeline you are, a maniac who wants to kill either his sister or he's fixated on a victim. This movie is all about the slut shaming of Marine Prescott. Dude, like, it's just, so bad. Just, like, I mean, uh, Billy says it best. Like your mother, your mother was flashing around town like she thought she was fucking Sharon Stone. Here's <laughs> my thing. I want Justin. Sometimes, 
Look, sometimes people like sex. It's an addiction. It's a disease. <laughs> Why are we shaming this woman for this? She couldn't help herself. She needed help. She didn't get it. And for what? Look, her life, she got murdered. Who knows what the fuck the dad's doing? Is he still alive? I don't know. Cindy's been shot and stabbed 25 fucking times. Gail Weathers, like all these people, all these kids dying everywhere, all because she just wanted some more dick. That's it. That's all she wanted was more dick. I mean, technically, you could say that she was raped and with rape. Joke. Here it is. They were like, because they were worried about shutting the movie down, and they asked the cops at the beginning of the movie, hey, do you think this is related to the movie? And they go, uh, your movie's called Stab. <laughs> <laughs> Just so dry. It was so great. Brilliant joke. They're never going to outdo that joke. That joke makes me laugh every single time. Okay, so getting back to get, get back to us. Okay, so well, I'm going to catch us up because you're getting way off track. Yeah. All right. I have ADD. Sorry, guys. You're fine. All of Tara's friends are at the hospital. All of her friends have a connection two characters from the past movies. As it turns out, Sam is having hallucinations of her father. And he- Who's, who is it? Billy Loomis. Plot twist! Dumb. Like that? Dumb. 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 Okay. Look. Billy Loomis was murdered by Dale Weathers when he was 18 years old. I'm supposed to believe that he had a whole other side gig with some other chick, knocked her up, nobody knew about it, and then he's got this girl that grows up fatherless thinking this other guy is her dad. Again, guys, what are you writing here? Who was sitting around the writing room going, you know what? Skeet Ulrich needs to come back. That man deserves some more screen time. Let's bring him back, and let's make it so that he had this this daughter that nobody knew about when he was also with Sydney, killing her mom and her and all of his friends because he was crazy. But yeah, he knocks up this other girl, and then she has a kid, and then grows up never meeting him, but yet somehow has hallucinations. And when he appears to her in these hallucinations, he is dressed in the garbs that he was in at the finale of the first Scream movie. He's got his little long hair tendrils from the 90s. He's got his torn up white shirt with the pig's blood from Carrie. And I'm like, why would she be seeing him like this? She never saw him alive like this. Dumb. Dumb. Okay. From a psychological standpoint, that's all I'm good for, like, in one podcast, apparently. So with hallucinations especially audible ones and visual ones, and that counted as both. If a person fixates on something, so she fixated on the fact that Billy was her dad, it Mm -hmm, makes makes sense that her fixation around him being a killer would cause her hallucination to be him from the final act of the movie. Because that's what she's fixated on. That's like the biggest trigger for her. So to me personally, that makes sense. And she probably saw the pictures of him yeah. in Gail's book. Let's face it, Gail's like, get some pictures, get some pictures. This is going to be in my next book. But did Gail photograph his dead body on the ground? Because the only other time she saw him that was when he was like beating the shit out of her and like going after Sydney. Like but she didn't see him like that until she literally shot or, him like ten seconds. Or, it would be police crime photos. Or Luke Wilson was dressed like that. Now, would... Uh, I, look, I don't even remember people's names in this movie. Luke That's how Wilson, much it meant to me. Luke Wilson played Billy Loomis in Stab 1. Um, oh, I remember that now, yeah. So, um, I don't remember even... I don't even remember what the sister's name was, the older sister. Uh, the older but sister is Sam. T- is Sam. Sam, yeah. So, like... Is Sam really looking at crime scene photos? Because I thought it was written in a journal in the attic that she read. I think after she read it in a journal, she probably did research because she would want to know who her dad was. So I feel like that would end up okay. that would end up in a deep dive, which would, you know, crime scene photos and then Gail's book. Because who knows? Gail probably sold crime scene photos and then just published them. 
Would Gail really sell a crime scene photos? Yes. Though? Yes. I think she would. I don't know. I think, I think there would be a line for, for Gail. No. I mean, look, she showed up with that haircut in Scream 3. So, I mean, anything's possible. No, if we're talking about Gail from the first movie, yes. Gail was like, hey, kids are getting killed. This is really going to push my book sales. She doesn't give a fuck. I think, I, I honestly think that's... She should watch him get murdered. Yeah. All right, so let's jump back into the movie real fast. So uh, Sam and Richie visit Dewey now because they need some advice. And she's mm. now currently he's, he's currently divorced to Gail, but, you know, he, mm. every morning with his morning coffee, he watches his ex-wife on TV. You know, it's probably his alone time. You know I mean, you know, he's living in a trailer. They pushed him out of being a sheriff. So after Dewey meets with Sam and her boyfriend, he calls Sydney and is like, hey, don't come to Woodsboro. And Sydney's like, all right, bet, but then shows up anyways. And then texts Gail the same thing. But before yeah, I thought I thought that was weird. Yeah. But before before um Sydney shows up, they have they have the obligatory uh screen meeting, which I, every movie has the obligatory screen meeting where we need to discuss the rules of the game here. Yep. What what are we living in and what and this I felt was the hard scene a hard scene to do because this movie was kind of doing a balancing act of what the fourth movie did yeah. the requel legacy sequel the passing of the torch you know I and so I felt this scene if if it had a weak point this would be the weak point in the movie it's only a weak point because of four yeah I think if you take four out of the equation it makes sense considering all the motherfucking leg legacy sequels we've had in the past year. Yeah. So, so basically, uh, Martha, Randy's sister, is still, you know, she's still kicking it. You know, they have a, a, a weird uh, little, like... That was uh, really weird, the shrine. That was, <laughs> the guy died 25 years ago, man. Take the picture down. I thought it was cute. It was, I mean, like, he's been dead a long time, guys. Like, yeah. a long time. It's her brother. Yeah. Anyway, I mean, so, like a picture in an urn, I think is fine. You don't need to dedicate the whole living room. <laughs> That's true. That's true. Oh, oh my god. All right. So, anyways, so they set the rules are set. They're living in a requel, the continuation of a narrative that derives heavily from the plots of the original, which is using Tara and her friends as the new generation, using Sam's connection to Billy Loomis as a way to weave the legendary characters in. Now, at this point, uh, you know, the chain reaction starts this whole bloodbath. Ghostface kills Wes and Judy Hicks. Which I was mad they killed Judy Hicks. We're... I liked her in the fourth movie. She didn't do anything except try to break up a marriage. What a horrible <laughs> woman. I liked the tension between... They have a name for that. It's called a succubus. <laughs> She's a home wrecker. No, She's like, you what? want some of my lemon squares? <laughs> Okay. We all know it was a metaphor for pussy. Ew. It was. Okay. Did I mean, I, I agree with Jesse. It was. It you was. It okay. was. Because she was like, "I got my lemon squares. They're so warm." Okay. That's all she did was lust after him. The whole she did nothing. The whole movie except just want to get up on Dewey's nuts. That's all that she did. But she added tension to Dewey and Gail. It made it. Did, I, did we care though? <laughs> like, I mean. <laughs> My God, <laughs> I scared. You scared? I okay. How many times are we gonna do the movie where oh Dewey's mad at Gail, Gail's mad at Dewey, <laughs> right, Dewey, right, something, true, and it didn't work out, and now they're yeah. breaking up and they're mad. So this yeah. is a different dynamic to their relationship, which I liked because if the fourth movie was just like Gail being bitter that she stayed in Woodsboro while Dewey's. Hmm. Gareth Dream, I think I would have vomited. Eh, that's true. Okay, yeah, I mean, I'll give you that. I don't disagree. Okay. <laughs> so, anyways, so at this point, you know, uh, <laughs> Wes and Judy are dead. Then uh, Dewey reunites with Gail, who comes to the town because she's got to cover that fucking story. She's right. Like, that story. Even though he literally, like, neither, neither Sydney nor Gail were even. 
remotely interested in coming to Woodsboro, and then Dewey called them and were like, holy shit, we gotta go to Woodsboro. It's like, what are you doing? He literally said, do not come here. Sydney, I could see why she would want to come. Gail, I think, was just money hungry. She needed, she needed a new book. No, she... Gail needed to find a new way to pay for Botox. That's what it was. <laughs> well, I mean, look at it this way, too. Like, Sydney keeps getting these calls. At some point, Dewey's going to call her, and she's going to be like, Dewey, which obscure relative of mine that I didn't know about is trying to kill me and all their friends now? Because I'm getting real sick and tired of this. <laughs> they also implied that she has kids now, so I think she wanted to like come back to end it once and for all. Which I but why would you just like not come back and then live for your kids? Well, I mean, technically, the third movie, uh, you know, Ghostface goes Hollywood, so we know this is not. I mean, here's the thing. I mean. It, Michael Myers, you stay out of Haddonfield if you don't want to get fucked with. Yeah. Jason, you have to stay out of Camp Crystal if you don't want to get fucked with. Yeah. You got to stay out of Springfield if you don't want to get fucked with by uh, Frank Cougar. But Ghostface is one of those beings where he's like, road trip! And he, you know, so he could go after him. Yeah, because every single movie besides one and four take place in different places. So I think I think it makes sense for Sydney Wayne. Plus, maybe she feels bad for the girl that has to take it on. No, I don't think. Who so. cares? It's not. She, who gives a fuck about that girl? Let her die. Stay safe. You got kids now. What is the problem All right. here? All right, I redraw. I withdraw my point. Okay, so Gail comes back, reconnects with Dewey. It's cute. Mm-hmm. Shit. It is. It, it is what it is. And then uh, Sam gets a call. From Ghostface and Sam's like, "Hey, I'm at the hospital. I'm gonna go after your sister again." Am I jumping too much? No, no, you're perfect. Okay, it's been a while since I've seen this. Okay, um, so Sam, uh, Richie, the boyfriend, and Dewey, they all go to the hospital, and now we're gonna talk about the biggest injustice oh, of God. this movie that made yeah. me fucking ball. <laughs> She cried in theaters. It made me uncomfortable how much she cried. I felt like a monster. I felt I like was just laughing. I was like, "They're really doing this in this movie? Like what? Like?" No. I was laughing because it was absurd. Like that's why I was laughing because I just couldn't believe that it was happening this way in this movie. I'm just like, "Really? This is how we're gonna do it, huh?" Yeah. Okay. It second, like he gets off the elevator again, and he was like, "No, I gotta do this." I was like, "You dumb fuck! You have so much nerve damage. You should not be doing this." Yeah. Right. And it hurt. And then when Ghostface is like, "Oh, it was an honor." Oh. oh it fucking hurt. I was pissed. Yeah. I was so fucking mad. I- I don't understand. He was ready to shoot Ghostface, and then his phone rings. Bro, send that shit to voicemail. Whoever it is can wait. What are you doing? You're about to kill the killer. It doesn't, like, it's probably just we want to reach you out your car's extended warranty anyways. Like, let that shit go and finish the job. But instead, he looks at his phone, and he gets gutted from behind and the front. Dewey, we were a horrible sheriff. What are you doing? No awareness whatsoever. None. Here's the thing. He probably thought it was Gail and got distracted. Because as we all know, there's one thing Dewey loves more than alcohol. It's Gail. Gail. Yeah. But, but For some reason, I don't know. I mean, again, that hair in Scream 3, I would have divorced her then. But, you know. The one thing that sometimes bothers me in the Scream franchise is that everybody forgets that guns can be uh, long distant. <laughs> like everybody's like, all right, I gotta take this gun, make sure I'm two inches away from the person. Right. That's the only way the gun works. I'm such a horrible aim. I have to be so close. It's like what are you doing? Make, I have to make sure it's right here in order for it to work. Because at this distance, Weren't you a sheriff? I'm sure you had to you had to pass training standards of firing your service like pistol. You're telling me you couldn't be 20 feet back and shoot Ghostface in the head? What are you doing, man? No, he did get his police training in Woodsboro, so that's, 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 that's yeah. probably why. Yeah. <laughs> 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 and, I think, and I think the thing, he wasn't a cop in the third movie because he was doing that consultant work. I think he just like went back to Woodsboro and they're like, Hey, you can be a cop again, but he didn't get any like refresher training. And then all of a sudden they they didn't bring him up to speed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, what's really sad about Dewey dying 
is that we're never going to get Dewey's theme music again. Oh. Gone. gone. Doesn't matter how many screen movies they make now. Dewey's theme music, gone. Out of here. He's dead. It's not coming back. Yeah. Well, this I mean, how, movie- many, how many people, especially members of the Arquette family, had their own theme song in the movie? Not many. No. Uh, none. The answer is one, and that was Dewey. I mean, yeah, yeah, that's about true. That's about true. Uh, Nigel says uh, the one thing Dewey loved more than alcohol, getting stabbed. I mean, that's a Yeah. Dude, she yeah. Got stabbed. Dude. It's like every fucking movie. Dude, he got... How is he walking? Like, he had to have, like, horrible lower and upper back nerve damage. I mean, he was doing the Bob Dole thing in Scream 2, but then he dropped it in Scream 3, so... I thought he got like some type of really like graph or something. I don't know. He just didn't have the pencil in his hand. He just used the pencil in there. I think the assumption was the stab that he got in two made all the nerve damage from one go away and three. It just balanced it out. Yeah. It was it, yeah. I think that makes sense. And, and it was also his his love for our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and praying that helped heal him. That's what it was. They, they lived in the Midwest. Or no, it was in California. It was California. Oh, never mind. It's the, always always felt Midwesty. The college was in the was Ah, in it was Ohio. in Ohio. That's why. But yeah. But yeah. You know, when he went to Ohio after that event, he had to go to that hospital in Ohio. Okay. So he was healed. By yeah, well, don't don't come to Ohio because that shit happens. So. <laughs> All right, back on track. All right. After Dewey gets killed, Sydney arrives. And tell Sam, like, hey, you gotta fucking, like, <laughs> shoot him up. in the head. Yeah, she's like, you gotta do something about this you gotta shit, shoot man. Shoot him in the head. <laughs> and, Sam, and Sam was basically, nah, you're fucking crazy. And Sydney puts a tracker in Sam's car. Proving that she is crazy. Proving she is crazy. Sam, Tara, and Richie, they all get, a co- get in the car. They wanna go to Modesto. Tara has pretty bad asthma and can't find her inhaler. So she's like, wait, I have an extra inhaler at Amber's house. They go to Amber's house. Um, Amber's house is Stu's old house. Ooh. Um, I thought that was very clever. I liked it. I wish they had hid it better. They like, shouldn't have put it in the trailer. In the trailer, I was like, I, I here's the thing. That house is so recognizable. Like when I saw yeah. like, a few things in the movie, I was like, they're at the house. Yeah. They're at the yeah. house. They, because I think what hurt them was they used the same camera angles as they did. Yeah, they did. So I was like, "That's the that's the house." They also, I don't think they changed the paint color inside the house. Creepy. I think the paint color in the living room was different, but like that main entryway Mm -hmm. that all of us recognize, I think it was the exact same. It was pretty. It was the same. Yeah, because as soon as I mean, like seven. Seven kids got murdered there, and you couldn't bother to change the carpet. Like, what the fuck, <laughs> dude? That house, dude. Let me tell you something. Whoever whoever sold that house, they're a genius. All right, that, that's what. Well, that I mean, think about it. They had probably been holding on to that for years. They were getting shit from their sales manager. Like, Remax couldn't move that shit. Had to go to Coldwell Banker, and Jake fucking sold that shit immediately, man. Because Jake closes everything at Coldwell Banker. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> All right, so Sam and Gail, or not Sam, Sydney and Gail, they follow them to Amber's house. I'm just going to say Stu's house for clarity. Yeah, it's, it's, Stu, it's Stu's it's house. It's Stu's house. Okay, so Sydney and Gail get there, and they're like, all right, we got to be careful. Uh, Amber, who's one of the killers, runs out, fakes that she's hurt. Sydney and Gail, they look at each other, and they're like, we're not buying this. And it, I think they go to shoot. Amber, but then Amber shoots Gail in yeah. his stomach. Yeah. So Gail's kind of out of uh, out of action. She's real quick, dead. But real quick question: How ballsy are they to make that assumption? That was a really I listen. I'm not gonna lie. I think I would have fucked it up. Actually, hit someone innocent. But like, how many well, kids of this shit have they gone? Yeah, through? that's true. That's true. exactly. And let's be honest: the kids are terrible actors, so they saw right through their shitty that's acting. True. They're like, yeah. no. And, and then Courtney Cox is like, oh, I got shot in the stomach again. I get shot in the stomach every movie. Every movie. And I don't die. It's like a Charles Bronson movie. <laughs> no, in four, she got stabbed in the shoulder, though. They changed Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So she did get a blade in her. So she's had both. Gail's had both. 
Yeah, she said both. All right, so Sydney starts casing the house, which I love when she lies. <laughs> she tells everybody like, "Hey, come out now. If not, she like starts shooting doors after she right. <laughs> not giving a fuck who's behind them. And you know what? <laughs> She's I, going- I have so much respect for that because she learned from all of the other movies. Yeah. She needs to be proactive. And you know yep. what? He was fucking right. Except Oh, I wasn't mad at it. I wasn't I wasn't either. I was laughing. Yeah. Um, and then somehow I think Richie pops up. She shoots Richie in the knee because he was in one of the closets. Um what else happened? Well, okay, so real quickly, before they went into the house, all hell broke loose because Amber at this time has already revealed herself as a killer. So everybody's running like crazy. Richie was not revealed to be a killer as of this point on. Yeah. Um, and what happens is the big reveal happens when uh, Richie, Richie reveals himself. And now this will get into what the twist and motive was. So, real quick. So, real quick, um, don't you think it's interesting in these new screen movies that the villains are people that are like five, seven, hundred and thirty pounds, but yet when they show Ghostface running around killing people, it's like someone who's six four, two twenty five. Yeah. And I'm just like, is this like Power Rangers where their body is morphing when they put the Ghostface costume it's on, like, like to get bigger? Like it's like the Blue Ranger from Turbo, where he's that little kid. Yeah, that's what I was getting at, man. He like fucking grew when he turned into a Power Ranger. Like that, you put on the suit and fucking grow. Like I don't know. I don't know, but like when you look at Ghostface's feet. Sometimes he's wearing like uh, Doc Martens that have like the really thick platforms. Uh huh. So that's how I explain it uh. in my mind, because that's what they do in the first movie. You see when um Sydney's in the bathroom and you see Ghostface like lower his feet to the floor. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. You get a shot of his Doc Martens and they're the platform boots. Wait, wait, that brings up a good point. So oh in the first God. movie, they were like, we can't track. We can't track the, uh, the the costume because it's all painted cash. Yeah, but we got footprints. We could have got the footprints. We could have we could have nailed this son of a bitch earlier. You know, it, they would have known it was Stu all along. Yes, so it was Stu. All- <laughs> <laughs> Stu was buying Doc Martens. <laughs> and his family were rich. He could afford the dude. Doc Martens were expensive in the nineties, man. They're still expensive now. So there you go. Now. Let's get into uh, the plot and twist of this movie. Uh, oh, my God. So, and I have my little say I have to say about this, but I want you guys to go first. So, basically, Richie and Amber, plot twist, they reveal that they are actually fans of the Stab franchise. They've known each other a long, long time because they met online. Uh, they were disappointed in the trajectory taken with the most recent Stab 8, which I love that they showed that little commercial of Stab 8 with the gold mask and the flamethrower nunchucks. Honestly. Hilarious. Hilarious. I loved it. Because it's like the perfect fuck you, we're going to make a shitty horror movie thing. It's aware, yeah. Which Hollywood does. So they decide to embark on a new killing spree to bring back the original cast and, which I don't feel like they were trying to bring back the original no, cast, but some people say that's the case. To provide a new and improved source material for a future requel of Stab films intended to frame Sam as the killer. Now, I get this movie was trying to be about toxic fan base, and, and maybe this movie would have been better next year coming out, because this year we've seen a lot of toxic fan base. So it, it's a good topic to hit on. But I don't think it's as strong of a topic to make a screen movie about. That's my thoughts. My thought is after seeing Halloween Ends, I completely understand their motivation. And if somebody did that to Jamie Lee Curtis, I would not be upset. Okay, that makes sense. <laughs> that makes sense. John, take your swig of drink and uh, let's get going. Oh, Lord. <sighs> it's really hard to come off of an ending like Scream 4. Um, <laughs> okay. I mean, the the literal motivation to this like tiny petite green costume is that my cousin, who was involved in all of this shit that has traumatized her for her entire life, 
gets all the attention and I don't. Therefore, I'm going to become Ghostface and kill a bunch of people. Wow. You want to talk about bad endings? That's one of them right there. <laughs> so now we come to Scream 5 and it's, wow, Hollywood really can't make movies I like. Let me just go ahead and become Ghostface and start killing a whole bunch of people I don't know that nobody even cares about or remember their names. And, uh, yeah, we're going to get that stab movie made again. Really? That's I fucking waited two hours for this movie for that fucking reveal. I would have been I would have been cool if it was fucking Dewey all along or some shit. At least that would have had some kind of risk or something. I could have been like, you know what? I'll get behind that. That was a risk. This was just fucking lame. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah. Have you ever heard of the Stu plot line they were going to do, I think, for Screen 3, but the script uh, leaked? No, no, no. Okay. Let me put this comment up while you just you talk about it. Because a lot of people have always saw Stu as a pushover and a lapdog killer. But this yeah. plot wow. really, really added something. So okay. take so it away. For the third movie, uh, the plot twist was Stu was actually alive and organizing all of the killings from jail. And he was kind of like at like a Manson cult status. <laughs> And that's how the trilogy hmm. was going to end. They were gonna I would have been good with that. Yeah, yeah. They were going to do it for three, but then I think the script leaked. Sons of bitches. Which is why three all, there's so many goddamn red herrings in that one. And they had to keep changing the killer because of script issues. But I thought they were going to do that in this movie. I was like really mad that they didn't. Because it would make sense. It would be at Stu's old house. Because And also, Matthew Lillard was in the second movie. Yeah, he was. It was a it was a very, very brief cameo at the, uh, what was it, the sorority rush party? Yeah, the rush before, <laughs> like, I think. Like, he's in the back as an extra. Like, that's how bad, that's how serious this was going to happen until script leaks occurred. So then yeah. they had to scrap it. And Matthew Lillard wants to come back. I don't know if they'll ever do that storyline. I wish they would. As predictable as it would be, I wouldn't mind it. I mean, yeah. I'd be good with it. I would be good with it. Like, like they could tell me, hey, this is the Matthew Lillard one, and I'll buy a ticket still. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Same here. Yeah. But so as for – so let me ask you two this. So did you feel that a toxic fan base and the need to make a better movie was a strong enough plot compared to the other a twists? <laughs> No. No. No, it was no. dumb. You, oh my god. You can't go from oh your mother's a whore and did this. <laughs> <laughs> her mother's a whore. That's what all your mother's movies. a whore. People don't like movies. That's what all three goddamn movies were. You go from that. Your to... <laughs> I'm sorry, no one's ever broke that scream like that to me. That's <laughs> the first trilogy. It's your mom's a whore. Yeah, she wasn't a whore. She was a sex addict. It was a curse, and her cross to bear. It's like, <laughs> oh my god! Wait, were you just quoting uh, Will Will Ferrell from *A Blades of Glory*? Sure was, man. <laughs> it, it has medicines and diseases and stuff. <laughs> but you can't go from that. I mean, the thing in four was fucking stupid. Oh. Yeah. Influencers weren't really a thing when four came out. Yeah. But and it was like it was like the killer is there and it was like, hey, I'm Jordan Ladd or whatever her name is. And I'm just like, really? I sat through this whole movie for that shit? Oh my god. I, I think and I sometimes I think this is the curse of screen movies that come out sooner than than culture catches up. Yeah. Because I mean, here's the thing. When the fourth movie came out, I mean, it was a good twist, in my opinion. I liked it, but I think it was a great... No, 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 wait, 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 wait. John, if this movie that came out today, during a time where people take TikTokers seriously... Oh, we're so loud. I know, I am, I'm sorry. But, I mean, that makes sense. I feel like that is the way we would treat it. Okay, okay, so... You know, we, we are oversaturated in re the real world with serial killer stuff. I mean, everybody watches ID Network. 
people listen to serial killer podcasts of girls putting on makeup while they tell stories about killers. So <laughs> it's like everywhere. Okay. I understand this. Um, <laughs> it doesn't mean that it has to be meta to this degree. And I think that's, what's pissing me off is that okay. we, yeah. we, we don't, we don't have to do this. There are other ways we could take this franchise to make it far more interesting and current at the same time. But I feel like we keep taking the MTV Teen Wolf track and we need to kind of stop doing that because let's be honest, like while there are tons of younger fans of Scream, my 11 year old is a great example. The people paying money for this shit are the us, yeah. the 30 the year olds and the 40 year olds that have been watching this shit from the beginning. So like, Maybe think about that when you're writing it next time, like, if that makes sense. Yeah, I think now, going forward with Six, because we know Nev Campbell is not coming back. Right. Um, and the only legacy character is Courtney Cox. I think the <laughs> motivations now are going to be different and a little bit more current. I think they had to find a way to tie it back to the legacy characters for this movie. Oh, I got it. Here it is. Maureen Prescott is really a fraternal twin with Gail Weathers, and so Gail is now snapped that she's not the whore, and she goes around killing everybody to finally round out the franchise. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I hope now, you look, now Gail is the sex addict. It's a curse. It travels person to person. So now Gail has it. Oh my god. But I think another <laughs> thing that this franchise suffers from is that this franchise is a reflective it's it's a reflection upon horror in society. Yeah. And I don't think enough yeah, time sure, has, sure. I don't think enough time has moved forward for there to deem something strong like one, two, and three, there was already material yeah. for that. Because yeah. by that time we've had trilogies, we've had sequels. And we've had who done it movies. So there was a, a wealth of information. By the time Scream 4 comes around, that's when they were just kind of tinkering with the legacy sequels. And then this movie came about, and I felt like there wasn't, you know what I mean? There wasn't something concrete. There yeah. wasn't something yeah. for the bite out. I mean, even even the, the Scream TV show, whether people hated it or not, it had something. It Ooh, horror TV shows since The Walking Dead have been popping up left and right. We could take a bite out of this. Yeah. I just now I didn't. I haven't watched the Scream TV show yet. Is it is it worth my time? Should I watch it? I'll watch it if you think it, it's worth it. The first season you might like. Yeah, it's it, not the greatest. It is what it is. You have to separate it from the movies. If you separate it, then you'll like it. It's kind of like the bread you get as an appetizer at a restaurant. Of course, you're gonna want bread. Ooh, you love bread. Ooh. But you're not going to fill yourself up on it because you know there's something better out there, which is the franchise. Uh, it depends. We went to Olive Garden yesterday, and I put away at least ten breadsticks. So, okay, so it's pretty good. It's it, it's. I thought it was pretty decent. I got to watch the rest of them, but I thought it was pretty good. I just I could when it came on live, I didn't have time to watch the week by week thing because I had a busy schedule. So we'll have to check those out, and one day we'll probably do a show about that on here. Yeah, I, I'll, I'll watch them. Pushing forward, pushing forward just because we're almost at the end of the movie and at the end of our time. Both the killers die. Uh, Sydney and Gail are like, oh, we miss Dewey. Um, Sam is like, I think Sydney says something to Sam, passing the, <laughs> passing the torch, torch-ish. Yeah. And that's pretty much it. And, and then real quick, I love the – so I had to pull up a synopsis of the movie just to help us be linear – and I love this line, and I just want to read it out loud for everybody. So, so you know, uh, Sam kills Richie, who's uh, the Jack Wade's character, okay? I just love this. Embracing her paternal heritage, she uses the knife to stab Richie repeatedly. <laughs> so I will say, people lose a lot of blood in this movie and don't die. Um, <laughs> like... Everybody gets shot, everybody gets stabbed, and everybody gets shot and stabbed in the stomach or the neck in this movie. There's nothing in between. And, like, look, I'm sorry, Gail Weathers, but when you get shot in the stomach, you're fucking dead. You go septic and you die. There's no coming back for that. Gail Weathers should be dead, no questions asked. 
Yeah. I was mad that she lived. And for all these people that claim to love Dewey, Deputy Dewey, everybody loves Dewey. Not one motherfucker shed one tear for him when he died. Nobody talked about it. Nobody seemed to care. It didn't affect anybody. There was no roundup discussion afterwards. It was like, oh my God, Dewey, you're so dead upset. Next scene, let's act like it never happened for the rest of the movie. What? This is Dewey. Why does nobody care he's dead? No, when they were fighting Amber in the house, um, it got personal. Yeah, because Courtney or Gail's like, this is for Dewey. Because Amber says, okay. Something. No. <laughs> All right. And then, and then at the end they say, "I'm going to write a book about Dewey." Yeah. They, they, oh, okay, they, great. You you got rich off your dead ex husband's oh, like body. Congratulations. <laughs> like. <laughs> All right. Fair enough. Uh, he's he's got a point. All right, that's, that's he made a, he made a point there. I'm gonna I'm gonna retract my statements. I, <laughs> well, like, so I just want I want people to care. Dewey is dead. This man is been the favorite character. From the very yeah. first movie. I mean, look, Doofy is the favorite character in Scary Movie, okay? Like, yes. and, and I love that they gave him the usual suspects ending at the end. That was awesome. Perfect. But everybody loves Dewey. Dewey, Dewey, Dewey. So you finally kill him for no reason, and it's like nobody cared. I'm like, well, come on, man. This should have been a – that's why I'm saying Dewey should have came back as the killer. That would have impressed me because I'm like, oh, Dewey's got motivation. Nobody mourned his death. Now he's going to kill all these motherfuckers. It's like, I would have been here for that. That's Nigel, a Scream 5 ending I would have been here for. Nigel's backing you. Bring back David Arquette. Make, his e make him evil with a pencil mustache. You know, yes. I feel like there's a way for Dewey to survive this. I want him to survive <laughs> this. I do, too. I really do. I think he's going to come back. I want him to come back. <laughs> For the sole reason of I fucking hate Courtney Cox and she's our only <laughs> legacy character and I don't want to watch her. Here's how they open Scream 6. Are you ready? It's all the Botox. That's what's bothering me. Like her face doesn't move now when she talks, yeah. man. You can't fucking react. And then <laughs> right? you can't smoke anymore. <laughs> I'm going to go on a tangent for a second because I'm still pissed off. They did Nev Campbell so fucking goddamn dirty. She is the reason I agree. Why, she's the reason why this franchise is good. Like when you, I agree. When you think of Scream, you think of Ghostface and then Sydney. Like yep, yep. I'm still fucking pissed. They did her so dirty and now we have fucking Courtney Cox. I don't want to look at her face. Here's and I get I get the logic cuz they're like we're not going to pay her that for relative to how much she's in the film. Fine. But you have to understand, it's the old saying of, you have to spend money to make money. Exactly. And there will be a certain amount of people that don't watch this movie for that reason. You could have had all of their money, but instead, you're not going to. So it's like, I get it, but then I don't, because Scream 5 was successful. I'm pretty sure Scream 6 is going to be successful. You're going to make your money back. She only wanted a couple extra million dollars. Like, you were going to make this money back. Yeah. Then yeah. kill her in this movie. So then we're done. And then we don't have to worry about it anymore. Yeah, put her in the opening scene. Kill her off. Be done. There it is. Beautiful. There it is. There it is. I have her go out the way Drew Barrymore did. Boom, done. That's a wrap. I would have been here for that, too. That would have been great. Because the thing is, I, oh, Scream is my ride or die franchise. If you look in our house, there's a lot of Scream shit. That is why Sydney's name is Sydney. On principle, I will not be watching Scream 5. I will bootleg it. I am not paying for it. You're going to do my girl like this? Fuck no, you're not getting my money. Fair enough. So, Jesse, does that mean we have to go see it without Sarah? That's going to be kind of lonely. Sarah should come with us. Uh, how about this? I will buy. I will buy a ticket for another movie, and then I'll sneak you in. Oh my god! So you're not giving oh, money. Oh yeah, there we go. There you I, go. I'm so you don't feel like that. you're stealing. Now, real quick, just so we can wrap up the story. Uh, so the both killers are dead. Uh, Amber is horribly burnt, which ironically, same. It, she was pretty much killed the almost the exact same way she was killed in Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. Yes. Just yes. about. It was almost identical, which I found hilarious. Um, Tara and Meeks, uh, the Meek twins, they're loaded into the ambulance. They survive. Sam thinks Sydney and Gail. Gail's gonna make money off her dead husband with the new book. Um, yep, yep. And uh, you know, 
It's not like she's making the book for free, you know. So I mean, at the end of the day, she's making money. And then Sydney just drives off into the sunrise. Yeah. Sydney's and then meanwhile, and meanwhile, the next movie will open to a dark screen, and we'll be seeing a hand right doing the thing from Kill Bill where they're punching the casket, and it turns out it's doing in his casket reviving himself. Oh, uh, you know what I? You know what I would really have liked to have seen is I would like to have seen a mid-credit uh, scene. Where it's just Sydney on the street with a backpack, walking, hitchhiking to the Incredible <laughs> Hulk sad music, and then she has a sign that says "Trying to get home to my kids." <laughs> yeah, but yeah, but essentially that is, but essentially that is the movie of uh, Scream. Now, real quick, let's just jump over to the comment section, and then I'll wrap up. What we'll Scream have Five. Scream Five. Yes. Uh, oh, John. It, John, yes, John. First attack on Tara. Eight inch blade stabbed in the abdomen. Stabbed in her side. Stabbed a couple yeah. times. Ankle yeah, broken. and she doesn't die. Are you serious? She, they even said she was stabbed like seven times, dude. That kills you. You're, okay, <laughs> like when you get stabbed in your stomach and like your back and your kidneys seven times, you, you, that's called dying. Like you don't you don't come back from that. There should be many scenes where they're reenacting Tim Roth from Reservoir Dogs in the back of the car. And just, <laughs> like, just imagine Dewey driving. Be fucking cool. <laughs> Be fucking cool. <laughs> You're going to make it. <laughs> like, there should be nine of those scenes in each of these movies, because that's the most realistic thing that would happen if you get stabbed in the abdomen. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Which, wait, 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 what was this? Sam goes to, to see her in a hospital and not in the ICU. Oh, yeah, she's oh, not. Yeah, she's not yeah. In yeah. The ICU. Apparently, right. being stabbed in the stomach 30 times is not an ICU thing. No, you can't be in the ICU because then you can't have all those characters and plot exposition happening. Plot exposition definitely mm -hmm. happening. Mm -hmm. yeah. She had to go to the hospital so that the movie could happen. So the movie could happen. That, exactly. So... Let's wrap it up. So this movie is getting a sixth movie. Uh, <laughs> spoiler alert: Dale will be in it for I don't know what capacity. Dewey is dead. Courtney uh, or um, uh, Sydney Prescott is not in this, but you know, you never know. It might be a secret thing where they're they're gonna put her in randomly. I don't know. You know, like I feel like Ned Campbell could just like sneak onto the set. And like put the ghost face costume on and then act out one of the scenes and then just be like, it was me all along, you know, like a Scooby Doo ending or something. There you I go. I fully support that. Honestly, <laughs> this movie tanks. I'm going to be so happy just because of what they did to Nev Campbell. Yeah. And also, yeah. what could be so weird is this movie, along with another horror franchise, is going to New York City. Because you have this movie that's going to take place in New York City, along with the Evil Dead movie that's Wait, going to take how did you place find in New York. Out it's going to New York. Oh, they they said that this movie takes place in New York City. Oh well, fuck that. I yeah, hold know on. They released any plot details? Oh yeah, hold, hold on a second. Let me. I have it right here. Give me a second. Um, Look, New York City is an amazing setting for horror films. You've got Shuds, and you've got Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight: Jason Takes Manhattan. Okay, these are two fantastic New York setting based films. Okay. Chud was amazing. I the gotta worst say. Part of uh, the Jason one in Manhattan, he did not go on a Broadway stage and slash and dancers. That is oh, that would have been good. I that would have been good. I, I wanted more Jason in Manhattan, yeah, that movie. I agree with you. Doing Manhattan things like, why not eating a giant piece of pizza or yelling at a cabbie when he's trying to cross the street? Hey, I want you here. I wanted this, and this could have probably ruined the movie, but I can't. You remember Home Alone 2, the, the, that music montage of Kevin going around New York? Oh but just God. with yeah. Jason. <laughs> just, he's just like, oh, he's on the towers, like, oh my God, it's brilliant. You know, he's just like, he's so excited. With him going to FAO Schwartz and playing on the keyboard? Yeah. Oh, I hope there's like a student film or something of that. I'd watch the fuck I'd watch the fuck out of that. <laughs> so here's the premise of the next movie. The films continue with the survivors of the latest Ghostface killing. Sister Samantha and Tara Carpenter, twins Chad and Mindy uh, Meeks, 
leave Woodsboro behind to start a new chapter of their lives in New York City, only to be again plagued by a streak of murders by a new Ghostface killer. Oh, but wasn't Gail Sounds Gail like Gail the plot to Scream 2 to me. I know. Well, here is one good news thing that I'm very interested about this movie. What and is- Jackie's coming back? <laughs> <laughs> uh, no. Uh, actually, Kirby will be back for this. Oh, yeah, because they hinted they showed she was alive during five. Samara Weaving will also have a role in this movie. Okay. And uh, Josh Sagara, which I hope they don't make him a secret villain because that would be way too predictable. Uh, you know how they're going to tie Gail in? How? Gail's doing her morning show for New York. Yeah. That's an easy time. Mm. If we won't be lucky and she'll be in the opening and then we don't have to worry about her. I, miss, I don't like Gail. I misread her description. It says a morning host. And I thought like, oh, she'll be morning. And there's like, no, 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 morning. And then good morning. What about uh, what about Henry Winkler, the Fonz, who was the principal? What if he's not dead and now he's the killer? Wasn't he stabbed like a lot? Though? We didn't see a body. Okay. Like three times. And apparently that chick can get stabbed seven times and lives. So he might he might still be alive. Which, we didn't see his brain. Which, by the way, I love that about the first movie. It's a very depraved moment in the first movie. We are like, oh, my God. Principals, whatever his name was, he just got stabbed and he's hanging by his guts on the football post. Let's go see it before they take it down. <laughs> I was like, yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Yeah, he can't survive that. He went the same way Drew Barrymore did. Yeah, I did. I mean, do we know it was him up there, though? Oh That's we, 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 we can't take the words of characters anymore. You're right. I, I think they should not make six. It should have ended with five. I agree. I'm sorry. We need to learn from the Halloween new trilogy we don't yeah i agree i think because here's the problem with the 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 thing with the halloween movies is they came to miramax at the time or jason blum saying we only have two ideas for movies two movie ideas and they popped out three and yeah and you saw by halloween ends they didn't have an idea what they they had nothing so i mean that was there's still people who say they love that movie and i'm just like i mean that's cool but why I will never trust somebody who says they like <laughs> I'm sorry. I read that trash of a tie-in novel. It didn't save it. Yeah. Well, anyways, that's all the time we got here at the Bride of Pimpy. I want to thank everybody for joining us. I want to thank our guest, John, also the producer of the show, for joining us. Thank you again, John. We absolutely appreciate it. Uh, I want to thank everybody, Michael, Nigel, Tom, uh, Al. Uh, let's see. Uh, let's see. That's about it. Thank you guys so much for joining us. Uh, next week's show is going to be an exciting one. We're going to be talking about another uh, Jenna Ortega movie because Jenna Ortega is in this. But the next thing we're going to be talking about is the Wednesday, Wednesday series that is on Netflix. Have you seen any of that yet, John? Uh, no, it's definitely next on my list of stuff to watch. So I will be watching that ASAP because I heard it was really good. Yeah. <laughs> Oh, she's doing the. Mm-hmm. As a diehard Adams Family person, it's good. Oh my god, it's good, but it's very predictable. We'll go into it next week. We'll talk about it. Um, Jesse witnessed me yelling at the TV when we first started it. I never seen her yell at a TV, so this is. Well, you'll see. You'll have to see that episode. But hey, Michael, thank you so much for talking about. It. But yeah. So next week, we're going to be talking about uh, Wednesday. So go to Netflix, check out the show. As always, the beginning of the show, we'll talk non-spoilers. And then the rest of the show, we'll dissect the whole entire thing. Uh, but until next time, I'm Jesse. I'm Sarah. Yeah, we're going to do it like the Grumps table, we'll except <laughs> it's the bride of Pimpy. <laughs> <laughs> yes, but thank you so much, everybody, and have a good night. And, oh, this episode will be on Roku. And right now, you could watch the Green Ranger tribute we've had uh, for JDF. It's on Roku right now, everybody. So take care, everybody, and have a good night. See you.